Hello everybody! So Booster 7 finally has all 33 Raptor 2 engines installed as per this image tweeted by Elon Musk himself and this is an insane amount of engines. I mean uh, these guys are nuts. Like <laughs> this this thing looks like it could <laughs> obliterate the launch mount with a single static fire. Like how many engines can you pack in a single rocket? Well SpaceX certainly pushed the envelope here and I haven't yet talked about the sheer power that each Raptor 2 is able to generate 230 metric tons of thrust which multiplied by 33 gives us almost 7600 metric tons of lifting power more than double the thrust that Saturn V was able to generate. So this is a huge step toward the second testing campaign of Booster 7 which is expected to begin next week and will among other feature several runs of static fires where each one will see a different engine ring section being tested, or at least that's what Elon more or less hinted at. So that would mean one test for the innermost three engines, then another one for the middle ring containing 10 engines, then another one for the outer ring of 20 engines, and finally most likely one or more full engine tests involving all 33 Raptors at once. It will also be interesting to see the water deluge system in action during a static fire, we have already seen some tests, but somehow I feel like that wasn't enough water as it would have been necessary for a full static fire or a launch. So maybe we'll get to see that in the coming weeks. And since we are talking about Raptor 2 engines, Booster 7 isn't the only lucky recipient of these powerful beasts. It's better have Ship 24 just arrived at the high bay a couple of days ago in order to receive its own set of Raptor engines, which will include not only sea level engines, but also vacuum optimized engines. And with Ship 24, it will also be interesting to see whether they decide to complete the thermal protection tiles before or after the static fire campaign. I guess it will make sense to have most of the spacecraft covered in tiles already before the static fire campaign, so as to stress test them and see which ones break to then replace them with new ones and so at least minimize the risk of them falling off. And if everything works well, all further pressure and cryogenic tests, including all the static fires, then I expect a full wet dress rehearsal on the launch mount and maybe before or after that, have both booster and ship go back to the production site for a final ready check and then Starship would be officially all set up and ready to take off the ground for the first time since May last year. At least for the ship, for the actual booster, it will be the first time ever flying, but nonetheless it would be an understatement to say that uh, this will be the rocket launch of the year. Probably the rocket launch since the beginning of rocketry. <sighs> oh man, I can't wait. It's gonna be great. Also recently, both SpaceX and NASA leadership met at Starbase for an update on Starship, which as you know will be the human landing system that will take the next group of astronauts to the surface of the moon after more than 50 years since the Apollo program wrapped up. They received what looks like a very exciting tour of the production site and they didn't look disappointed. The last thing I want to mention is the imminent announcement of the FAA regarding the programmatic environmental assessment next Monday the 13th of June. We have been more or less patiently waiting for this since September last year and it looks like this is finally going to happen so I'm also really excited about that. And with that I finished this short video. I hope you liked it and that you are as excited about the upcoming orbital flight of Starship as I am. I will see you all soon with another one. Have a nice day, take care, bye bye.